Hello and welcome to my retro watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. And on the bench this week, we have this little tank watch. Uh, it's made by a company called Marvin. I know absolutely nothing about it other than it is quite old. It certainly looks like on the dial, it's got some radium. Um, so I've got to be a little bit careful on that because of course that is radioactive. Now, um, the reason I've decided to film this watch is because there's something interesting about the movement that any watchmaker or hobbyist maker may well have encountered and I always find that these sorts of movements or problems in movements quite entertaining. So let's get on with it, let's get the uh, watch out of the case and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I have to remove the dial, and that's going to be fairly straightforward. It'll have a couple of dial screws, no doubt. Uh, but I've just put finger cuts on. Um, like I say, um, I think it's radium. I'll try and bring it a bit closer to the camera. You can kind of tell. I always think you can tell. It looks a bit funny. Definitely different to any normal loom. And of course, it's radioactive. Now, um, you can read all about the radium girls who used to lick the... Um, paintbrushes that they used to apply this to and eventually quite a few of them got pretty ill and then eventually the substance was banned I believe sometime in the 60s. So um, I've just put finger cuts on, I'm going to be a little bit careful. It's only going to be dangerous if I ingest it or inhale it I guess and uh, the idea of course is just not to um, disturb it too much. So again, like I say, finger cuts, and then I'll just chuck the finger cuts away. I'm taking no chances, um, but uh, I don't think it's all that lethal, certainly as it sits on the bench at the moment, in any case. So you might have spotted it already if I move it around a little bit. It's very, very shiny, isn't it? And because it's full to the brim, full of oil. That's right. Somebody has tried to get it running, has clearly opened the case up or the whole movement itself, dumped it in three in one oil or some WD-40 thinking that that is going to make the watch run again. Now I've encountered this many, many, many times uh, it's obviously the people who don't know anything about watches and they just think that's going to work. So it's almost quite funny. Uh, but I get a real strange pleasure out of these watches. They're a bugger to clean because you've got to clean it all off. But it's really satisfying when you do because hopefully the watch will run. So I'm going to stick it on the microscope now. We can have some fun looking at it close up and uh, then we'll start the disassembly. So here we are on the dial side to start with. You can see everything is nice and listening because of the sheer volume of oil in actual fact this is possibly one of the best i've ever seen so well done to the owner for uh, having a go um, but the good thing is usually oil of course preserves so it stops all the rust from getting in so there's nothing really that interesting to see here other than the oil but let's flip it over to the other side because i think that might be a little bit more interesting so here we go then, more listening. I've just got a little bit of pegwood here. You can see what happens with oil. It does attract hair and unwanted fibres. This is the, uh, looks like the ratchet wheel on top of the barrel. Nice dirty jewels and looks like there's some more hair deep down in there. Let's see if we can get a focus on that. Well, it's there actually, isn't it? On the top, never mind. Okay, let's move on to the best part. 
yes. Here we go, the balance. So um, this is <laughs> quite an interesting one. The balance is absolutely stuck together. I just need to turn it a little bit so that I can uh, get in and just try and give it a rock. And you can see, or maybe you can't, but there's no chance that's going to run in that state at all. And it, hopefully, I am hoping that this is the cause of uh, the reason why it's not working. It's the most obvious so far, unless that something is broken in there to start with. So uh, there we go. Um, don't fill your watches full of oil. That's all I can say. Uh, or if you do, uh, send them to me because I get great pleasure out of cleaning them. <laughs> right, so we have to strip this down. It's always going to be fun as well because it's going to make everything absolutely blooming filthy. So let's get back on the bench and let's start the disassembly. Okay, so we have a basic movement here. Um, we'll have a dial washer swimming with oil. And also the hour wheel. Let's look at that. It actually, I don't know if you can see that. It kind of makes a ripple in the oil on the t on the top of the movement. Now, I guess this thing must have been lying face down as well, wherever it's been stored. Now, I don't want to put these in my parts tray because they're going to make a disgusting mess. So, I'm going to have to put them on a little bit of watchmaker's paper. And hopefully a bit of that oil might just get absorbed while we're at it. Just quickly taking note for my own self as to how the keyless works. Two screws and a setting lever spring. Drenched in oil. Then we've got a little spring in the keyless there just to hold the yoke in place. And I'll try and see if I can get that. Just wondering if I can actually move the yoke. Yes, I can. Helps me take the tension off the spring. Minute wheel. Wow, look at the oil. <laughs> So we've got the mini wheel, the setting lever will probably have a screw on the dial side I would have thought, little driving pinion, and the stem, of course I can't release it because I forgot to undo the uh, setting lever screw, never mind, there's a bit of a schoolboy error, and I'm not sure if this spring, oh it does, the spring comes out nice and easy, and then we've got the cannon pinion, and is that on tight, it is, so I'm going to grab it with my other tweezers. And that is on real tight. So I have to get my little special tool. So okay, let me just get my tools and I'll take that off. And then sort out the setting lever as well. There we are. It's the hand setting tool really. Presto tool, this is my version one. Also doubles up as a cannon pinion puller. Everything is sticking to the tweezers as well, I might add. So just to put this in perspective, I've just touched the movement and I'm absolutely covered in oil. So, uh, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so we need to take the movement apart now. And um, this should be a little bit more interesting. I've never worked on anything like this before. It's certainly a little bit smaller than I'm used to. Uh, so I need to try and let down some of the mainspring. And this never comes on very well on camera, but I'll try. And uh, it's unwound itself in one fast motion, not desirable. Quite stiff actually to turn. So that could be an indication of a problem. However, there we go. So I'm gonna start with the balance and uh, you gotta keep the balance safe, of course, even in this state, 
but more importantly I want to take it off and I want to put it on the microscope to show you a little bit more about what oil does to a hairspring. So here we go, that's the uh, pivot, the top there, we've got the little impulse jewel and then of course the hairspring and it's also got a hair on it, how apt is that? So um, what this does, it's quite difficult for me to get in here with the way I'm set up, but a hairspring you can see is just all stuck together, uh, not doing anything very well with those coils. Now why I've got specialist uh, hair spring degreaser which is called oil, uh, sorry not oil, essence of Renata which I talk about a lot in some of my videos and this is going to need a massive dunk in that, that's for certain to strip that off. Uh, but hopefully it'll come back to a coil because if not I've got to do some hairspring work and I'm not brilliant at hairspring work but I'm fairly confident even looking at it that it might be all right. Um, just go to show what extreme um, oil can do. There's no way this watch is ever going to run looking like that. Okay, so I'm going to start first of all with this bridge here. Ah, there we go. I actually thought that was one small bridge, but it's not. It looks like it is. Yep, it's part of this assembly as well. And there we are. One bridge. And that is housing the uh, second hand wheel, the escape, we just need to get the uh, pallets out as well, so I've got two screws for those. Okay, now we need to try and remove uh, all of the ratchet wheel and the click. Straight away, what can I see? Lots and lots of oil, even underneath the screw. Wow, look at that. If you can see it. Insane. Okay, we've got the little click for the or the spring for the click here. So be a bit careful with that. There we go, that's out of the way. And then we need the crown wheel as well, which usually is a left-handed thread. And that doesn't want to budge in either direction. Hmm. Always worries me. You always gotta be a little bit tentative with those, you don't want to break them. But I was having to turn it the opposite way to tighten it just to see if it would loosen. And much to my relief that did actually pay off in the end. You run the risk of shearing the screw of course in top of the barrel arbor and oh it's not the barrel arbor is it it's just the main plate and that would be undesirable. So we'll remove this now it looks like is that a little washer there? 
not sure if it's a washer or a bush, so you've got to be careful of that, certainly when it comes to cleaning. So we've got three screws, let's remove the bridge and all the oil that goes with it. Now at this point I will also say that the movement says 610. That's the only identifying mark I've seen on this. So I'll have to try and research that, see if I can find out anything at all about it. I've not seen a brand yet, so um, unless Marlin made their own, of course, that is a possibility. You're always going to be a little bit tentative trying to get these bridges off as well. You don't want to break anything. Something, uh, I was going to say something's giving it resistance, but it's not. It's just everything is stuck together. So that is the case emptied. Um, the case emptied? What am I talking about? The, uh, the main plate done. It's just all of this here. That I need to have a look at just trying to get it into shot so I just need to see if it's going to just come out or not they do feel particularly wedged in that wheels okay but the barrel the barrel doesn't want to come out perhaps if I can turn it over and give it a poke no That is particularly stiff in there, so I need to be a little bit careful. I'll try and ease that out now off camera. And there we go, absolutely saturated under there with oil, but strangely really tight into the, um, the hole there. So it is now stripped down. There is the, the setting screw there as well. And that is it guys. I'm going to try and creep this in, don't know if this is going to come in shot or not. There's all the parts along with all of the oil. A nice little basic straightforward movement to be honest with you, there's not many components at all to this one. Um, so cleaning is going to be epic. I've got to give it a bit of thought about how I'm going to do it and how I'm going to present it to you guys in a fun way. So let's cut to the cleaning now.
Okay, so here we are after the cleaning straight on the microscope with the balance. I was hoping to see it all nice and clean and centric, uh, but removing all that oil has proved that there's a bit of a tangle and it's gonna be a tricky one for me. I'm not very good at hair springs. Have a try and lift up the stud. And if you look down and to, I'm trying to think where it would be. It's my right at the moment, but then this gets inverted when I, when I edit. You can probably see there's two coils touching and they've kind of overlapped. And uh, that's gonna be a little bit tricky for me to figure out how to do that. I've got my daughter's slinky toy to try and replicate it and understand it. Uh, but trying to do this on camera isn't really gonna be viable, I'm afraid, guys. So I'm gonna have to try and do it off camera. So wish me luck, because even once I've got it out, I think the coils are then still gonna need a lot of tweaking. This thing is all over the place. Uh, but I really do wanna try and save this watch if I can. So we'll do our best with this hairspring. Here we are after absolute hours and hours of work. And I've managed to get that coil absolutely spot on and perfect. So I'm really, really chuffed. I hate hairspring work and I hate hairsprings work so much that I bought a new one. <laughs> Here is the original. Now, um, I actually have got rid of the, the twist, although it does look on the um, picture here that it's still there. Now, I, I was given a great tip. I'm not gonna be able to show it very easily at all, uh, but I was told to get an oiler, put it in between the core from the center and go all the way around. And then eventually when you get the end, it sort of moves that overlap all the way to the end. Then you sort of just tuck the uh, stud underneath and then it's done. Um, but the hairspring was all over the place, as you can still see now. And uh, I did spend actually quite a few hours trying to tweak this. And usually when you tweak them, you get them worse before you get better. But I had to give up. It was driving me insane. And this replacement I found on eBay uh, in Germany. And it was uh, £16 plus a bit of delivery. So it's £20 all in, I think. And when you put put it against how many hours you're going to put into these things, I think £20 was well worth the uh, spend. So all I've got to do is fit that. Um, but first of all, we will build the movement and then we can see if we can align that as best we can to get into the watch and get it onto the, um, onto the um, bridge, not the bridge, whatever you call it, the balance cot. <laughs> so let's go to the bench. Let's build the movement and see if that's going to work first of all. Right then, let's get on with the build. Now this movement is quite small, and as a result, I'm not sure how clear the video is gonna be on the resolution scale. So if parts are slightly out of focus, uh, do forgive me. Um, I've just put some D5 oil there for the barrel, and of course I've already wound in the mainspring as well. Um, so, it is, or should be a fairly basic uh, rebuild movement on this. Shouldn't have too many trouble. Just trying to sort my uh, magnification out. So we need to fit the train back in. So there's the escape. Now this wheel, I never know what you call it. I can't remember. It's the uh, seconds. No, that, that one isn't picking up the wrong one. So this one here, I'm not sure how much in focus that's gonna be, it has a long pinion on it, and that is the pinion that the second hand is going to be seated on. So this bit here, and the way to, um, because if you remember, this movement hasn't got a second hand, so I've measured that with my calipers, and it's 0.2 of a millimeter. And then I've been on Cousin's website, and I've bought a multitude of small, hands and um, hopefully maybe i'll put an overlay of a couple of those on the screen now for you and the idea is of course is that the measurement is correct to that pinion and therefore they should fit i do think i'm going to have to cut them a little bit because i think they might still be a bit too long so we need to drop that one in and i think actually i need to fit the other wheel first
That one's really giving me the dance. <laughs> it really doesn't want to. Uh, there we go, finally, it sits. And then the same for this one. And this one's going to sit a little bit proud, as you can see. But they are in. Uh, now, again, a little bit of D5. And I'm just going to put it in this hole here. I'm going to put a liberal amount. And that is the uh, setting lever screw. Uh, there we are. Then we have the center wheel. And it hasn't got a dual port on this, but I'm still just going to put a tiny bit of D5 as well. It probably should use 9010 in reality, or no oil at all, but I've got no service sheet to work from. So I don't know um, where I should oil. But there we go. The uh, train is in. We've just got to try and uh, get the bridges on. And that might mean a microscope. And if it does, unfortunately, I've broken down the microscope for the um, using two cameras. So that bridge feels like it's on OK, but I have a feeling If I can get hold of it, that this bridge is going to be a little bit harder because of I've got to try and line all the pivots up. I don't like how I'm holding it. something's not in so what I will do first of all is I'll screw down the first one because that way I know they're going to be engaged okay and now I'll just see if I can fettle them in And you can see how this rocks and of course that means that one of them or all of them is not in the right position I'm not sure if I've got it there or not Yes, that seems okay. Right, okay, let's put the screws in on that as well. Okay, I've just double checked that to be sure. And as you can see, they are spinning nice and freely. So we can continue on. And we are now going to put the uh, click spring in. And these are always a little bit of fun. Just need to get it looped round its post. Hold it in position. And then make it jump all over the place. <laughs> So it's just vital that you hold these things in position as best you can. Some people like to use a bit of Rodico. I just tend to find that Rodico sticks to everything afterwards. Then you uh, have a job trying to clean it up. A bit of pegwood usually is enough for it to not go anywhere. It's actually fouling on the, the case here. So I need to try and put the long end in, I guess, on this occasion. And then just try and... It's not having it, is it? 
Come on. Voila. And now for the click itself. And this will have a little lug underneath it that you need to get on the right side of. Oh, I've just disengaged the spring. Would you believe it? Uh, right. As I said, look, there's a lug. I'll put it on there. Hopefully you can see it. And that has to be on this side of the spring. And now I've got that on the wrong side again, because I wasn't thinking. I say in all my videos, you get to see all my mistakes as they happen. And uh, here's another one. And sometimes I get too busy talking and uh, not enough concentration. I think that's probably what my... Uh, Teachers said at school. <laughs> Come on. So this is the thing in watchmaking. You can get extremely frustrated. And you can get angry. Or... You can just laugh as I'm about to because it's all come out again. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this without the pressure of filming and it'll probably work for me first time, but uh, there we go. There we go. Finally, the damn thing is on. So another little bit of D5 and I'm just going to drop that in on the... Uh, Arbor port there. We can bring in the ratchet wheel. There we go. Wheels are turning and they sound okay to me. So let's carry on. going crazy for the D5 so I'm putting a bit more on there and that is for the crown wheel the crown wheel obviously transfers the wind of the crown to winding the spring and it's a left-handed thread There we go. So other than putting the pallets in, which I'll do in a bit, we sound good there. So everything is looking positive so far. Let's turn it over and let's start the keyless works. Okay, so let's go on this side. Just gonna bring in the winding pinion here. I just need to apply a little bit of grease. Now, I'm sorry I've not got my nice macro shots for the microscope for some of this. I kind of need three cameras. I'm trying to do a bit of a B-roll on this one. So you get to see things from a different angle. So we'll drop the clutch in. And then the winding pinion. Like so. And then I've just realized one major thing I was supposed to do is fit the um, setting lever, which needs screwing from the bottom face. So I'll have to just put that 
in position. These are always a bit of a nightmare. I keep forgetting. I think I am get so used to doing Seikos all the time. Just a little bit of Molly Coat DX. I've got loads on the oiler there. I have to put a bit on the clutch and then we can fit the uh, yoke. And then while I'm at it, I just need to get some grease into this place here where the yoke is hitting the setting lever. Now just help with the friction. Something like that. Good. So far. Right now we have the um, well, let's actually just quickly put on some other parts. Just need to grab my other oiler. And I've put some D5 on this pinion here because I need to fit the um, cannon pinion. There we are. And then some 9010. I don't think I had it on my oiler. Uh, 9010 on that little post there. And also a little bit on here. In preparation for the wheels. You have the minute wheel. And then this little pinion here as well. So hopefully they're all meshed. I can't tell from where I'm sitting. And now I'm going to try and turn it round and attempt to fit the uh, yoke spring. Hopefully it's not going to be like the uh, click spring. Okay, there we are, perfect, went in easily enough. And then all I need to do is drop on the setting lever spring. Now this has got a bit of tarnish on it that didn't come off in cleaning and I'm not gonna sort of attack it with any um, abrasives. It's clearly an old watch. And as such, it's got some tarnish. So need to secure those with these little screws. If I can get it into position because it keeps moving. Using the wrong size screwdriver really here. There we go. Hopefully such a difficult movement to get my fingers into. Ah. So I was going to say hopefully it works, but it doesn't, and I'm not sure why. I've got something wrong there. Oh dear. Right, take it all off. Have another look. Okay, I can see it, and the yoke is not engaged with the uh, clutch. It should be in that little slot. And for whatever reason, it's not. And it's like the setting lever is not on low enough, but it must be. There. Okay, that's in. I'll put the uh, cover back on. The cover. The setting lever spring. And we'll try again not sure if that's coming through but that is now i can only just get my fingers in there but it is actually winding so mission accomplished granted i've just got to put a little bit of grease on there which i will do 
uh, but now we need to set it up for the uh, pallet fork. So here's the pallet fork. Now I can't really see very easily whether that's in. And I probably just took it right out of focus for you guys too because of my poor eyes. I can just see it on the camera. So that is in position. I'm happy with that. I'll just put the screws in. So again, apologies if the uh, clarity is not good. Okay, so as much as I'm absolutely dying to put uh, some wide into the mainspring and check that the uh, pallet fork clicks from side to side, I need to keep it there in its central position with no power in because I've got to be sure that the new balance and hairspring, the uh, impulse joint, that I can't even say it, the impulse jewel lines up sort of centrally and it will fit in the, uh, the forks there of the pallet fork. So otherwise it'll be off and I'll have horrendous beat error and lots of work on my hands. So what I'm gonna try and do, first of all, is drop in the new one as it is, uh, because for all I know, it could be set perfectly. It is a new old stock, so I can only assume that would be the case, but I don't know. So I'm gonna try and drop it in uh, so that I can get the pallet fork engaged and see then where the stud is, and we can then drop on the balance cock and see if the stud is going to line up with the, the uh, stud arm on the balance cock. So if that all goes well, then it's fairly straightforward to just fit it and then we can put some wind into the spring and see if it's going to go. So I'll just line it up. I'll put the, the balance in probably off film. I'm going to try and bring it in now while we're talking because it is particularly fiddly thing to get in uh, without uh, anything else and I can't do it very easily on the microscope because I can't see what I'm doing so I'll just line that up get it in and then I'll show you what I'm talking about okay then hopefully this is in focus for you um, try and see if you can see the pallet fork below and now I've managed to get the pivot into the jewel and if I just start to turn this a little bit you can see can you see that the pallet fork is moving and of course that is where you want it. It's going to be central. So if I line that up central there or thereabouts, what I can now do is drop the balance cock on the top where that fits and see where this, this is the stud. So if this is somewhere near where it should be going on the balance cock, then hopefully I've got it aligned. If not, then I've got to try and move the hairspring by using the collet, which is in the center and that little split in it. I have to sort of nudge it back or forth. And that can be a real cat and mouse game. I'm nowhere near very good at this sort of stuff. Uh, this is definitely for the professionals. Um, but, but let's try. I'll just try and line up the balance cut, like I say. I won't be able to do that on the microscope because I don't think you'll be able to see it. Okay, well, I have put the uh, balance cock on. Look, it's absolutely perfect in position. And you can actually see the stud uh, in that little hole there where the screw is. So it is, hopefully, uh, if my theory is correct, that is lined up absolutely perfectly. So all I need to do is uh, put the um, stud in position, screw that uh, tight, and then I'll be able to fit the balance and see if the watch is gonna run. So I'll just fit that now, first of all, and then we'll have that moment of truth. Is it gonna go if I put some wind in it? Right then guys, we are on the time graph. You can see that the balance is turning. This is the reading I'm getting. Yep, that looks blooming awful. And I have to confess, I am now a week on from the original um, fitting of the hairspring. I'm completely demoralized. I put the hairspring on and um, it ran really badly, as you can see. And I thought at first, well, okay, I can fix that. That's just a case of moving the um, collet that the hairspring sits on and getting it into position a bit better, which I did. 
And every time I did that, I still got a really bad rate and the beat error is just questionable all the time. And I didn't know what to do, a bit out of my depth, so I reached out to some of the pros that I know and the consensus is it's actually not far out, but I would need to adjust some of the balance wheel screws in order to try and bring this in a little bit better. And to, of course, set the beat would mean shortening or lengthening the hairspring from the stud, which I don't fancy doing for a start because that's really, really tricky. And the screws on the balance, well, I thought I'd have a go, but there is no screw heads on them, so I don't know how to turn them. So all in all, it is a disaster. The watch is running on full rate. So you can kind of, hopefully you can see that if the camera focuses and I am holding the camera, so excuse the shadows and everything else. But the rate thing is just here and it's on maximum and it still shows a minus. So I am despondent. But what can I do? For the sake of the video, I'm going to continue on. We're going to fit the dial, we're going to fit the hands, and I'm going to see if one of the sub hands fits that I've bought. So at least we can finish the watch for the start um, and then see how, if I can do any more on this balance or not. I don't think I'm going to. So it could be one of those videos that in actual fact, the restoration has not worked. So as much as I'm not very happy, um, let's crack on, let's get the dial fitted and uh, get the build done complete. Well then, here we are. The watch is back in bits. I've been away from this watch for, I think, near six weeks now. A um, couple of reasons. Uh, a problem happened straight away uh, with the particular watch. It uh, annoyed me so much I put it away for a while. I then caught COVID. Uh, that took a couple of weeks to get rid of, and now I'm a few weeks past that and back at the bench. So this watch is driving me mad. I can't believe it's ever going to run now. Uh, there was a bit of a mistake that I made, or a, a mistake that I didn't see, should I say, in the disassembly. And what happened is the mainspring has broken. Now, how would that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. The mainspring was actually set. Now, if you've never heard of a mainspring being set before, these really old watches like this, I, I can't date it to be honest with you, but they have a quite old, sort of inferior steel uh, mainsprings. I can't remember what they're made of. I don't know if it's an alloy or whether the new ones are an alloy. Uh, but basically, um, obviously they're a spring and they retain power. And then over the years, they certainly have been stuck inside that barrel they set, so they just sort of set to the shape and they lose a lot of their power. And somebody did comment this when I was um, pondering why it would snap, and that's how I've kind of figured it out. So I've had to go out and buy a new mainspring. Uh, I'll pop that in in just a moment. It's come in this little silver packet here, as you can see. And then I'll have to rebuild all the watch again. And I'm sure it's still not going to run great. But you never know. Maybe it might just cure some of the problems. So bear with me while I uh, put it all back together again. And continue on with that balance problem and all the other problems I've still got to overcome. Right, here we go. This is a well, the set mainspring. Of course it's missing the center curl because that's what broke. And what you're looking for here is, I don't know why I'm moving it around, is basically the coil is a bit shrunk. It's not as uh, big as they would normally be. And um, that's how you can kind of tell. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is sort of, I think the first or the second one I've actually physically seen other than what I've read and seen online. So that is the, the spring. So here is the watch all rebuilt and the hands on. There we go, you can see it a little bit close up. Uh, not a perfect dial by any stretch, but uh, I think this watch is actually from the 1940s or thereabouts. So that's kind of what I figured out from the movement at least. Now, uh, even putting the mainspring on uh, in was a major fight. Everything about this watch is driving me absolutely insane. I normally laugh at all the problems I get because it's my coping mechanism uh, but this one's really got under my skin. 
Uh, I found that the um, mainspring arbor um, was uh, quite wide and the curl on the mainspring was quite small and I really, really struggled to get it in. I did the usual trick of putting it in a pin vise and it took, it just took so many attempts. It drove me mad. Then I rebuilt the watch, put the watch on the time grapher and it ran atrociously, even worse than you've seen it already. It was, I don't know, the rate was over 500, the amplitude was down to 140 something or other and the beat end was also quite tragic. So I ended up um, biting the bullet and servicing the whole thing again. So I took it all to bits, cleaned it and rebuilt it. And here we go. So I'm going to put it on the time grapher now and you'll be able to see uh, the reading. A little bit of freehand video again. Uh, we are uh, dial up as you can see. And this is the reading I'm getting. So it is not perfect by any stretch at all. The rate is uh, still too slow and it's on its maximum on the regulator um, on the balance. I cannot push it any further. Amplitude I think is okay, B terror is, is still way out, but I really, really don't want to go and touch this, this hairspring again. It's caused me so much grief, you wouldn't really believe how many hours I've actually spent on this thing. Far, far, far too many, and because it's been stressing me out, this is as good as it's going to get in my book. I know some of you out there might think, well, that's a fail. You can put this down to a fail, but look, you know, it is potentially an 80-year-old watch, and if it's running to within 42 seconds or thereabouts a day i think that's in my book it's still a win you're not going to wear this thing every day and if you know it's running a little bit it's just gone crazy now probably picking up my talking who knows um <laughs> am i speaking too soon i don't know i've actually had this running on the time graph for all day before i started filming and it's it is nice and constant so i've just given it a full wind before i started filming and that's probably why we've seen some irregularities it is just a nightmare that's all i'm going to say about it uh, i'll be glad when it's all over so that's all i'm going to say about the movement side we've still got the subject of the little uh, second hand to do so i'll do that now and then we can case the watch and finalize the end of the video so at some point in this video i showed you that i was going to buy or i bought some hands and this is one of the uh, cheap uh, assorted selection ones it's the only one that i found in there that's actually painted black and then we've got the fancy one which i paid a bit more for more money for if you can call it that which is that one. And now I know these aren't coming out very well on film. So uh, the fancy one's the one I like. It's sort of in keeping with the other hands. So for now, I'll just try to fit that. Now obviously it's long. We can see it's far too long for the, for the watch, but I'm hoping to trim it. Uh, the problem is it doesn't want to go on and in actual fact I think I know what it is which is a bit of a pain and something I didn't think about the problem we got here is and that's not going to come out and film I know Let's see if I can get it to focus the little tube on the back is too small it's not it's not long enough actually to get on the pinion so damn 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 right this one i can see is longer so it's gonna have to be plan b and let's hope the measurement that i took all those weeks ago for me pays off so again i'm having trouble with this one there okay so we can see it ticking finally for the first time ever so what i now need to do is shorten that and i've got a plan because i also found this 
This is just a, another one, another hand. Uh, it's a dull colour, not black, but it's a lot shorter. So I was going to fit that and see if that's good enough for length. And if it is, I can trim this one to that one as an insurance. So let's offer the little one. So that is actually a very good length, isn't it? I think that's. So I'm just looking at it through the through the camera. I think that's a perfect length, actually, to be honest. So we need to cut this one to that length. And you might ask, well, how how do you do that? And I'm going to line them up, and I'm literally just going to use some toenail clippers to nip the end of that. Okay, let's fit it. There we go. If I take my focus lock off and bring it up. It's still a little bit long. Certainly when it gets to the track there. But I kind of think it'll do, to be honest. <laughs> I keep saying I've, I've almost given up with this blooming thing. So, there we go. We're in business. Let's get it cased. I'm just going to give the case a little clean. I can't remember where I put it. It's been so long. Here it is. So, it looks like it may have even been chrome plated or it's a bit of... I don't know what it is. I don't think it's um, stainless. So, I'll just give it a light... Um, clean with some auto sole metal polish and of course we'll um, poly watch that lens. guys did you like that one I'm not sure I did but perhaps for you guys it was pretty good to be honest I don't know what was worse uh, fixing this watch or trying to fix this watch or catching Covid and you're never gonna hear that in a sentence are you I mean both were pretty darn bad this threw lots of stuff at me from all of that oil in the movement the dodgy hairspring the repair on the new one which went disastrously wrong for me the broken uh, mainspring the dodgy hand Everything, and even now I've recased it, I now can't actually wind the damn thing because the blooming crown is too worn, so I'm going to have to probably put another crown on it as well. But I'm done other than that. I really, really, really am. Now, this watch isn't actually mine. It's a good friend of mine called Nick, and Nick was also responsible for sending me the Zodiac Seawolf. Uh, which was filmed on this channel a couple of years ago. And you remember that was done over three videos and that was also a nightmare of a watch. So I'm starting to wonder whether all Nick does is find dodgy watches. And I have to say, he is a gardener. Well, that's at least what he told me he is. And I'm now starting to wonder whether he's actually a grave robber and he's digging these out of the ground from somewhere, God knows where, and giving them to me to try and figure out if I can actually get them going again. Who knows? Either way, normally on watches, if I get a little bit um, annoyed, I just try and laugh it off. I think it's the best way. It keeps you calm. And I've tried to do my best with this one, but it really has drove me crackers. But I'm glad it is now ticking. It wasn't ticking when it came. And it can 
he can be worn he can be worn and, and enjoyed if you like this sort of thing I didn't like it on my wrist it's a bit too small and you know okay I think it's from the 40s it might be early it might be a little bit later but it's kind of that era so if something 80 years old it's still you know ticking away at, um, at 40 odd seconds a day uh, I don't think that's too bad to be honest with you and I know from the professionals and the more advanced out there may even be watching even that that can be uh, corrected uh, with the right tweak of the, uh, the the screws on the balance wheel which I am not going to get touching at the moment I'm still too much of an amateur for all of that so that is it uh, for this video <laughs> thank goodness I really do hope you enjoyed it um, sorry it's been so long since I've been posting videos if you enjoyed it put a thumbs up down below because that helps Google's algorithm to tell people this video is good and they will show it to more people uh, if you want to support the channel perhaps buy one of these t-shirts there is a link in the description and there'll be a link in the comments too uh, these are going quite well which has been nice because it allows me again to try and fund more projects for the channel and if you are an up-and-coming uh, watchmaker or wannabe watchmaker hobbyist uh, consider checking out my tool page uh, on my uh, retro watches website which i'll leave a link down below the affiliate links cost you no more to buy gives me a little bit of kickback again as well i'm trying to drive the channel a little bit try and buy some nice new projects to put on the on the bench and unfortunately uh, youtube doesn't really give me much revenue to do that so anything that helps is fantastic lastly as well don't forget to check out the facebook group um Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. Uh, there's so many people in there now. It's unbelievable. A lot of you guys are already in there as well. So come along and see what that's all about as well. I've got more videos coming soon. I've got lots of projects. I've got one project from one particular person that some of you might know out there in the watch world. So that will be coming eventually. So stay tuned for all of those. Don't forget to click the bell button to do that. And don't forget to click subscribe, please. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye for now.